Let's praise Him all over the building. The Lord loves us. He's for us. He really is. He's for us. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, praise team. What a beautiful touch of the Lord we feel. He loves us, doesn't He? Amen. You can't earn it. You can't earn it. You may be, you may be seated. Just a moment. Pastor Cody's going to come and lead us in teaching about first steps tonight. And, uh, and we're so glad that they are home from Guatemala, aren't we? Amen. They had a wonderful time. <laughs> this past Sunday, I caught us on a, on a three, three day fast and, uh, Esther did that. And I had been talking about it since uh, the first of January that we would do a three day fast at some point. Uh, I, I thought we would do it during the media fast, the 30 day media fast, but, uh, you know, I don't know if it was me not wanting to fast. Who knows? I don't know. I, spirit of honesty is upon me right now. But no, really, I felt, like, I felt like through some of the process that it was time. And I do believe the Lord is sending a man of God here this coming week. That's got a word for us. And uh, so Sunday night, Monday night, and Tuesday night, make sure you take time to be here. But the question about fasting is, uh, look at your neighbor and say, why, why are we fasting? You know, why are we fasting? And uh, uh, why are we fasting? You know, let me, let, me, let me clarify something. Fasting is not uh, making God feel sorry for you so he'll give you a miracle, you know. Oh, poor Aaron down there. He hadn't had a cup of coffee all day. And, you know, Gabriel, I was just looking at him. He, he didn't get to have a cheeseburger, you know. And, and I'm not going to start talking about food because we're all going to get mad and, and hungry. But, but he didn't get to have this. And then, oh, you know what? Let's give him two more days of that and see how much he'll suffer. And then, I'll, you know, I'll feel sorry for him and give him a miracle. That's not what fasting is. Look at your neighbor and say, God's not feeling sorry for you because you didn't eat today. <laughs> you know, truth of the matter is maybe go 40 days without food and be better off. Couldn't we? Yeah. And uh, now you're real mad at me. I feel it in the building. Quit talking like that, Pastor. But the, the truth of the mass, matter is that fasting, fasting does several things. Uh, it, as much a part of Christianity as anything else, even as faith, is self-denial. Everybody say self-denial. Denying our flesh is very, very biblical. Jesus said those that come after me must deny themselves. Fasting is self-denial. Uh, you know, disciple and disciplined Disciple and discipline sound a whole lot alike, don't they? Amen. You guys sure are quiet tonight. Don't get mad at me. I'm just trying to obey the Lord. Uh, but uh, um, discipline, dis discipline and disciples sound a whole lot alike. And self-denial. The Bible says that the grace of God teaches us, teaches us to deny ungodliness and worldly lust. And that I've learned over the years that the number one thing that is the enemy of my soul is really my flesh. Jesus nailed flesh to the cross. He was our substitute because we get in the way. When I would do good, what? Evil is present with me. Fasting also allows me to appreciate what I have. And uh, let, me, let me give you an insight here for a few minutes. I'm not going to preach long. And uh, I just want to give clarity. In the book of Nehemiah, uh, chapter 8, and it tells us that they sh should publish and proclaim in all their cities, verse 15. And you can get your Bibles out. I'm really going to preach now. I have to postpone Brother Cody if I get going here. Look what it says in Nehemiah, the book of Nehemiah, chapter 8, verse 15. This is when they returned from Babylon. Uh, they had rebuilt the temple. They are rebuilding the walls that had been torn down. And now they get the law out and they're like, we want to do it right this time. And, and it says that they should publish and proclaim in all their cities and in Jerusalem saying, go forth into the mount, fetch olive branches and pine branches and myrtle branches and palm branches, branches of thick trees to make booths as it is written. So the people went forth, brought them and made themselves booths, every one upon the roof of his house and in their courts and in the courts of the house of God in the street of the water gate, and in the street of the gate of uh, Ephraim, and all the congregation of them that were come again uh, out of the captivity made booths and sat under the booths. For since the days of Jeshua, which is actually Joshua, 
uh, the son of Nun under the day had not the children of Israel done this. And they, and there was very what? Very great gladness. Let me explain this here today. When the children of Israel under the leadership of Joshua got into the promised land, they're no longer in a tent out for 40 years. Remember, 40 years in the wilderness. They would wake up, manna's on the ground, water flowed out of a rock, and when they, when they got into the promised land, it was law to keep what is known as the Feast of Booths or the Feast of, anybody know? Tabernacles. And what it would do is one week a year, they would set aside one week a year and they would inconvenience themselves. They would go outside their house, whether up on the flat roof of those stone houses, outside in the streets, outside, and they would build makeshift booths, sort of like little forts our kids build when they're little. And they would sleep outside for one week. Why? To remind them, we haven't always had it this good. It used to be, we used to be in the wilderness. We were, we were in tents. We didn't have it all. Now we're in the promised land and we don't want to ever forget where we come from and what God has done for us now. Amen. That's what it was for. I don't want to ever forget that if it hadn't been for the Lord, if God, if we're not careful, we will become self-consumed thinking that everything we have, we brought it ourselves, and forget to be grateful to the Lord. Fasting allows us to stay grateful. It allows our minds to be clear, to, go, to, to be hungry a little bit. We don't know what it's like to be hungry. We, if we miss breakfast, we, oh, I'm starving to death. My kids, 15 minutes after they eat, I'm so hungry. I'm gonna die, one of them said one time. My lad, you just ate bowl of cereal 10 minutes ago. What are you talking about? And if we're not careful, how many know we can become ungrateful? There's so many people in the world that do not have, but we do. We have been blessed. Hey, hey, we sing it. God bless the USA. God has blessed our country. We have more than we need. Our shelves are full. Would you stand to your feet with me right now and clap your hands and thank God for all the blessings and all of the goodness? Everything he's done for you. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. And studies would say that after a three-day fast of water only, and you remain standing, uh, three-day fast under water only, that your body resets. You get control of yourself. It's, it's in scripture, some call it a direction fast. Over the years, I've seen people that need a direction in their life, decisions to be made. What's, what's the next step? They would go on a three-day fast and find that, and God would bring clarity. Fasting doesn't move God. Elbow your neighbor and say, it moves you. It positions ourself in a place to be open, to be humble. It, it's humbling to fast. Man, I feel this right now. And, uh, you know, the coffee and, and all those things that we love, you need to be in control of your coffee. Sacred cow in the room. Yeah. Your Diet Coke for all those people that laughed at the coffee statement. All the Pepsi drinkers in the building. You ought to be able to say no to that for a period of time. Now, I, I realize there are different health conditions and everybody's body's makeup is different. But, and I'm just saying for all the healthy people, for three days, water only. But I, I do think that that's not an excuse to go eat a cheeseburger, you know, because you have limitations. I think we can do things better than that. Can you say, man, it's about self-denial. You can eat some carrots and green beans and something else besides my lands. I'm about to preach. We're about to have an altar call if I keep on going. It's going to be conviction in the whole building. But how many know we need to self-deny? Why? Because I want God to know. I want to posi be positioned to hear. When I'm on a fast, the spiritual clarity that comes up on me is, is overwhelming. The, the ability to pray with weeping. If you haven't wept for a while in the altar and seeking God, and you've been around this, fasting will allow you to become tender to the things of God and will allow you to become sensitive to the things around you. Another word in the scripture for it is being sober and being vigilant. Fasting will allow you to be sober, vigilant, alert, and understand the times. And we're living in high times, end times. Do you believe that? Would you lift your hand and say, God, I wanna, I wanna do what you want me to do. I wanna continue this. I wanna be strengthened. Lord, I want my prayer to be impactful. Oh God, today, I want to be a difference maker. 
In Jesus' name, I pray that you will bless us this week. God, this weekend is a big weekend. And God, we've got an evangelist coming in to preach. I pray we can hear from heaven, oh God, for our city and our families, as for our children, oh God, for our nation in our prayer. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Would you, one more time, would you pray? They tell me there's a bad strand of heroin that is around this area right now. And there's a lot of, a lot of, uh, uh, things that are happening right now. Let's pray for our community. Let's pray against this. Would you pray, God? We pray for our community. I pray for strength, oh God, for our babies, our, our children, our, our young people, these adults, oh God, in our community. Lord, God, they're yours. I pray protection, a hedge of protection around our community, around our families. God, around these people, oh God, let there be a stop to this. And Lord, let there be a revival. Let there be a restoration of life, a restoration of living. Lord, in the name of Jesus, come on, let's pray right now. We're believing in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. One more prayer request I have, and Pastor Cody, if you'll come. But just two, two doors down on the right, there was a, a lady, her name is Becky. Gary and Becky live there. They've been tremendous neighbors of the church for many, many years, great people. She just found out she has terminal cancer. And I was with them yesterday. They're great people, and it's, they, they did not see this coming. And uh, we're going to believe that God's going to answer our prayers. Would you lift your hands and pray for Becky and Gary? God, we pray for Becky right now. That, Lord, you could send the angel of the Lord in there. Lord, you could, you could move into that house right now. I pray for our friends today that you would touch them. I pray that you would touch Becky right now. You know what they're going through, Lord, with this stage four cancer. They're calling it terminal, but we know you get the last word, oh God. I pray for healing. Come on, let's believe right now. We pray that you would bring a miracle in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you for every healing we've ever seen. We thank you for everything that you've ever done. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen, amen. Somebody shout amen. amen. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he has done for me, oh, my soul cries out, hallelujah. Oh, praise God for saving me. Sing it with me today. Oh, when I think of the goodness of Jesus, and all he has done for me. Oh, my soul cries out, hallelujah. Oh, praise God for saving me. Oh, when I think of the goodness of Jesus. Has it been good to anybody? And all he has done for me. Oh, my soul cries out, hallelujah. Oh, praise God for saving me. Let's clap our hands and praise him today. Amen, 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 amen. Hey, let's praise him for a moment. That's all right. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord, everybody. It's good to be in the house of the Lord on a Wednesday night, isn't it? Amen. I'm going to have you be seated just for, just for a moment. And uh, I want to say before I start tonight, thank you to all who have prayed and sent messages and, and uh, pulled, uh, pulled me and others that went aside saying, I'm covering you in prayer. Thank you for your prayers. We had a wonderful trip and uh, just, a, just a great time and uh, saw so many neat things happen. Uh, I'll share one with you. Um, on the last, the final night that we were there, we, we saw a um, uh, backslidden pastor that came, that came to that service on Sunday night. God refilled him with his spirit. Beautiful things happening. Amazing things happening in Peyton, Guatemala. And uh, thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your prayers with that. I need to mention something tonight. Our staff felt uh, that this would be a good night to do this. So I need to mention this to you. Uh, we are constantly trying to make everything that we do the most efficient and the best that it can be. And one of the areas that we have seen change in is giving. Um, everybody say giving. 
as you all know, uh, we have, our whole society has moved away from uh, mostly cash and, and check and is now going in the direction of a, of a bank card and, and, and those types of transactions. And so we have made that available to this church for several years now. Most of us understand in the building that there are processing fees that go along with that. So in full transparency tonight and in trying to be a better, uh, the best possible steward of what you entrust the church with, we want you to be aware of some of the fees that are incurred and maybe give you a possible solution uh, uh, to something that, that, that you would see here. So if you want to throw... Um, this first slide up, our, all of our bank processing, all of our card processing is done through a company called Plaid. It's through a company called Plaid. It's very secure. Uh, you can see there the different things um, that, that it does. It offers data encryption, uh, monitoring, all of those things. It's uh, the best of the best, and that's why it's, it's offered here. It's a secure way to, to give to the church. And so our, uh, our church goes through that for, for giving, uh, but we want you to know that, uh, we want you to know our fees, okay, our processing fees. So if you throw this slide up, currently uh, the processing fee for a credit or debit card transaction is the, is everybody with me? Does everybody understand why I'm saying this tonight? How many of you give via card or, or uh, electronically? Would you raise your hand if you give ec electronically? Uh, the majority here do. Uh, so this is for you tonight. If you don't, that's no problem. Uh, and that will forever be available. But this is for those who give electronically tonight, all right? Uh, the processing fee for a credit or debit card transaction is 2.15% plus 30 cents per transaction. A processing fee for an ACH transfer, which is a bank account transfer, is 25 cents flat rate. So, next slide. If you were to give $500 one time by using a credit or a debit card, you $11.05 of that would be fees to the credit card company, to the processing company. It would just be fees that would go out, okay? Through an ACH bank account transfer, that's 25 cents. Okay? Y'all see the big difference there in that. So, so let's say, uh, let's double that and say that's $1,000. Uh, I'll tell you what, go to the next slide. Let's, let's, see, uh, let's see if you give $500 weekly, um, if you give $500 every week, um, this is the fees that would be a part of that. By the end of the year, you would have incurred $574.60 in fees just by using a credit or a debit card. But if you were to use a bank transfer, it would only be $12.50 for the whole year. So I think you get the point of what we're trying to encourage you to do. And that is, if you are using currently using a credit or a debit card, um, to give. And if you want to continue to do that, that's fine. That's, that's no problem. There's no issue with that, but a better way to do it. And a really a cheaper processing way to do it would be to connect your bank account and do an ACH bank transfer. Okay. You can do that in the church center app. And it's, it's a very simple thing. You go to the Church Center app, you click your profile up in the top right corner, it'll say add bank account, and then you go through the process. It's diff, it differs between banks, okay? So uh, my process through Chase Bank was very simple, very quick, but others may be, may be different. And so uh, we would encourage you to do that. Certainly you do not have to do that. Uh, we, we want, uh, whatever way to give, we want that to be available to you. But we wanted to at least let you know of the fees that are incurred or, uh, or that happen because of the transaction that happens. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay, excellent. If you have any questions, feel free to go to Sister Hyden, um, Sister Hyden, Sister Hyden, uh, Hyden and Hyden Incorporated. Go, go to them. Uh, come to me, Brother Adam. Uh, any of our staff, we'd be happy to help you. And uh, anybody in the information center as well, they would be happy to uh, help you and or point you in the right direction and give you the right person to help you. All right. Does that make sense? 
If that makes sense, wave, wave your hand at me. Say, that makes sense. Excellent. All right. All right. Let's, let's get into uh, step three tonight. Are you, are you ready for step three? Are you ready for step three? Is everybody else ready for step three? Are you ready for step three? All right. Let's, let's get into it. Page, page 52. Last week, last week we concluded step two and pastor uh, talked about our spiritual giftings and, and how those integrate with our personality and the makeup that God has put within us. And so let's, let's go on. This week we will be discussing why, why it is that you'll love it here at the Anchor Church. How many, how many would agree that this is a great place to be, that this is an amazing church to be a part of? This place is the best of the best, and we want to explain tonight why you would love it here. Also, before I, before I go any further, if you do not have this book and you want a copy of this book, it's available. I don't know if we could get somebody maybe to jolt there uh, right now, but if you do not have a copy and you want a copy, you go to the bookstore just in the cafe area. It's just five bucks, and you can pick up a book so you know where we are. We're on page 52 tonight and if and if you forgot your wallet or or just just go to your neighbor go to your neighbor and ask him for five dollars and uh ask ask him for six you know you just might as well get a double cheeseburger on the way home so uh all right uh <laughs> oh wait oh wait we can't <laughs> ah no i was trying to well never mind I don't want you, don't sin now, I'm not, don't, don't, don't sin now, I didn't do it, I didn't tell you to do it, yeah, I just got, I got done eating fish this week, no, no eyes, no eyes, I ate some fish, I ate the tail, but I didn't eat the eyes, and so, yeah, it was a good, good week, all right, let's, let's get back to this book, Our Hope for You, the purpose of today is to get down to the details of what makes us different from other churches, God has given this church a unique vision, we want to show you how you can be a part of that. We want to share with you our focus as a church, what we value, and a, fruit, and a few principles that help us step fearlessly into the purpose of God, uh, into the purpose that God has for our lives. First, First Corinthians 1 and 10, I'm struggling speaking <laughs> apparently, uh, the end of that verse says that ye all speak the same thing. Everybody say the same thing. Uh, and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Paul wrote to a church, to a body of believers. And uh, so let's get right into it. We're going to talk tonight about seven differences that this church has maybe from other churches or other churches that, that, that you've attended in the past, seven things that make our church different. All right, are you ready? Are you ready for that? Turn to your neighbor and say, are you ready for that? All right, it's some fill in the blank here, so you gotta stay with me, help your neighbor. Our church is a spirit-filled church. A spirit-filled church. Spirit-filled. First blank is spirit-filled. Help your neighbor. Scripture says the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. Amen. Our, our church is full of the Spirit of God. If you were to begin to study the word spirit or ghost, you would see in the Hebrew that that word means ruach. A wind, a breath, a violent exhale, a blast of breath. In the, in the Greek, in the New Testament, that word meant pneuma. It was a current of air, a blast of breath. The same thing there you see. The spirit is, is uh, compared to, in Scripture, a breath, the breath of God. The breath of God. Hey, you, <laughs> this is a silly way to start this story, but have you ever had a conversation with somebody and you just felt like this tall because they were like saying, you know, the other day when I was skiing in the Swiss Alps, you know, uh, Nigel and I were, were enjoying our most wonderful time together. And you're just thinking in your mind, I just, I just threw a hot pocket in the microwave tonight. 
Yeah, I, uh, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that. Two days ago, I, I, I'm, I'm going to use one of those. That's why I said that. Two days ago, I, was, I, I jumped into a, uh, a lake and paid 10 Guatemala. There's my, there's my uh, Swiss Alps for you. Uh, and a lake and paid 10 Guatemala. And, and uh, Denver and I, we, we were diving into the water and trying to see who could, who could go the furthest out. And, and uh, I remember I, I dove under that water and and I was coming up, uh, I, it, was, it was deep water, and we were jumping off a really tall dock, but it was, uh, and, and we returned all five people, by the way. Our rate of return was excellent. Five for five. We took five. We brought five. You can trust your kids with us. Um, but we dove into the water, and I remember, you know, we're competitive by nature, and I remember going as far as I could and then trying to come up for air, and I, st- I thought I was going to be at the top, but I wasn't at the top. And so I panicked a little bit because I was ready to take that breath of air. But then I started swimming more and, and, and you know, praying at the same time. But, but when I got to the surface, I took this massive breath of air, you know, trying to, trying to catch my breath. The, the Spirit of the Lord is that way. When you, when you hear about the spirit of God, it's, it's life. You know, the, the life that, the, the way you are living is by the breath that is in your body, right? You have life because you have breath. And when his spirit enters into your body, it's like breath that fills you again, Brother Chuck, with that life. It's not, it's not a birth of the, the flesh, but it becomes a birth of the spirit. It's a breath of life that comes into you and the difference that that we are from maybe any other church uh, any other church that 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 is around is that we believe that the spirit of god can operate and should operate on a weekly basis within the church within his people we believe god still pours out the gift of his spirit as he did in the New Testament. We still believe that's available for everybody today. We believe in speaking in tongues. We believe in the evidence of the gift of the Holy Ghost. We believe in that because we are a spirit-filled church. Can you clap your hands and say amen to that? Amen. That's why John chapter 6 and verse 63 says, uh, it is the spirit that quickeneth. Uh, the, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. They are life. They are life. Uh, so number one, the Holy Spirit is our helper. It's our helper. Bible says, John 14, 16, he said, he will give you another comforter that he may abide with you, not just for a period of time, but he will abide with you forever. The, the, the Spirit of God is our helper. Number two, the, the Holy Spirit is our teacher. John 14, 26 says that, that the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you, everybody say teach you, teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. The Holy Ghost is our teacher. So at this church, we embrace the supernatural. We believe supernatural things are possible. We believe it because we've seen it happen. Amen. We've seen supernatural things here. Bodies healed and, 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 and people filled with the spirit and addictions gone and all of these things happen. Wow. How does that happen? Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. We believe in the spirit of God. Clap your hands unto the Lord. So we believe in those things. We are a spirit filled church. The second thing that makes us different is we are a Bible-based church. Bible-based church. Last line on 50, well, not last line, never mind. Number two, Bible-based church. So it's the third line on page 53. We are a Bible-based church. Second Timothy 3, all scripture. Somebody say all scripture. It's given by inspiration of God. It's profitable for doctrine, reproof, correction, Instruction and in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. The man of God is not just talking about pastor, he's talking about you. The man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Uh, we believe that the Holy Bible 
and we believe that the Holy Bible and the only Bible is the authoritative word of God. Amen. We believe that. It alone, everybody say alone, is the final authority in determining all doctrinal truths. We don't have a Bible and then have a manual that we determine biblical truths off of. We have the word of God. That's what our biblical beliefs are based off of, the Bible. Amen. That's why they said in Galatians 1 that if we or an angel preach any other doctrine unto you than that which we've already preached unto you, let him be accursed. Amen. If, if, let, let me say this. If God was powerful enough to give us his word, he, he is powerful enough to keep his word. And I say that because you, you run into these conversations. It's kind of like conspiracies on Facebook. You run into these conversations. Well, the Bible is, it's, it's translated and, and some of it was left out and some of it was here and, and some of it's, you know, in the Dead Sea over there. And I found a piece of paper in my backyard and it, it looked biblical. And, and, you know, you get into all these all these conversations about all of these different things, but somewhere you have to have faith that says, if God was powerful enough to give his word, he's also powerful enough to keep his word, and we have exactly what he wanted us to have in this present day and in this present hour. Can somebody say amen to that? He's powerful enough to keep it. Amen. So, we believe that the Bible is the authoritative word of God. It alone is the final authority in determining all doctrinal truths. So uh, we accept that God's word is my highest authority. The first blank at the bottom. We accept that God's word is my highest authority. The last blank on the bottom. We receive God's word with an open heart. We don't receive the word of God at this church. We don't receive the word of God with skepticism. Saying, well, I wonder if I, we, we have faith to receive God's word with an open heart. Somebody say amen to that. Uh, the earth, O oh Lord, is full of thy mercy. Teach me thy statutes. The importance of, of, of the word of God, of of learning the word of God. And last, uh, the next thing, we respond to God's word with obedience. Top of page 54. We respond to God's word with obedience. Is everybody with me? So we accept the word as our highest authority. We receive the word with an open heart and we respond to the word with obedience. Because scripture tells us, be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, lest deceiving, deceiving your own selves. We can't just hear it, we've got to do it. So we believe here that we, that we are to act out the word. Amen. Somebody say amen to that. Number three on page 54, we are a others focused church. A others focused focused church. Luke 19 and 10, the son of man has come to seek and to save that which was in church for 30 years. He lost. He came to seek and save that which was lost. And we, we are a others. It's not about, it's not about us. It's about, everybody say it's about others. It's been said that the only institution that exists for the benefit of its non-members is the church. We embrace that completely. Everything we do is geared toward getting as many people lost, as many lost, we don't want to get people lost. I mean a cheeseburger. I'm kidding. We don't want to get people lost. I might be lost after that. I don't know. <laughs> we don't get people lost, okay? Um, I lost my page. I threw my book. <laughs> uh, we, it's been, oh, help me, Jesus. Everything we do is geared toward getting as many lost people saved as possible. Amen. 
We're others focused. <laughs> we want you to leave saved tonight, not lost. Number four, we are a vision-driven church. We are a vision-driven church. Our vision is simple. It's restoring people to a greater purpose. That's what all, all of this revolves around, It's restoring people. We do that through loving God. and lo- uh, People are restored through loving God and loving people, growing in their faith and going to save the world. We are a vision-driven church. Everything that we do is based upon those things. And if it's not based on that, we don't do it. You say amen to that. We don't, we don't uh, cook good chicken around here. We don't, I'm still talking about food. We, uh, you know, we don't, we're not known for uh, anything other than, other than being an others focused, saving and restoring house uh, for people. Amen. Number five, I better move on. We are a giving church. Everybody say we're a giving church. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The gospel is the ultimate demonstration of God's generous nature toward mankind. The Bible is, the Bible consistently teaches that God blesses us so that we may bless others. There's three areas where, where we give and scripture calls us to give. Number one, we give of our time. We give of our time. Ephesians 5 Walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. We give of our time. Number two, we give of our talent. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. The Spirit manifests itself through, through, through its body, uh, through the talent of the, of the people in the body. And so we give of the talent that God has given us. Number three, we give, the top of 55, we give of our treasure. We give of our treasure. We do believe in the power of giving here. Can you say amen to that? Um, uh, Romans 12, or he that exhorteth on exhortation, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence, he that showeth mercy, with cheerfulness. We believe in giving here. Uh, Jesus gave his church a mandate to reach the world around them in three areas. You know, Acts chapter one and eight, it says you receive power after after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You'll be witnesses in Jerusalem. Everybody say Jerusalem. Everybody say Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. And so number one, we give we give in these three areas. Jerusalem was their city. And so we give, we give in our city. We give in our city. Um, James 1, pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this. Visit the fatherless, widows and their affliction. Keep himself unspotted from the world. We give to our city through community outreach efforts such as recovery classes Acts class, abortion recovery classes. We, we offer, uh, we, we give to, to programs like Forever Dads and helping fatherhood and, and homes without, without fathers. We, we provide food. We provide clothing. Uh, you've seen, many of you have seen, we just had a clothing giveaway a couple weeks ago. We have a, uh, we have a clothing and food here that we provide for those who come uh, and need that. We, we give to our city in these, just, just a few examples, but many, many different ways. Number two, uh, Judea and Samaria represented the nation there. And so not only do we give to our city, but we give uh, to, to our nation. We do that by, by strengthening the existing churches that, that, that are near us. We have begun new churches we have begun uh, six campuses here locally and, and many others globally. We, 
we start new works. And so our giving goes towards these efforts. And lastly, our world. Everybody say our world. Mark 16 tells us to go into all of the world and preach the gospel. And so we, we give in these three areas, in our city, in our nation, and in our world. We strategically invest a portion of our resources in missions works all around the world with a focus on missionaries, unreached people groups, children, and church planning. Glad to tell you, Pastor mentioned this today, but I'm glad to tell you as, as a network of campuses here in this region, we have given, oh, we gave over $200,000 in 2020 to foreign missions. Isn't that amazing? Over $200,000 that we gave to missions. That happens because of a church that believes in giving. Amen. We ought to celebrate that for a moment. Let's thank God for that. We've been able to support missions all around the world. We are fulfilling the Great Commission. Amen. We are fulfilling the Great Commission of going into all of the world. That's possible through giving. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. Amen. Let's move, let's move on. Number six. We are a joyful church. A joyful church. It's all right to have fun in church, right? We're a joy. Well, never mind. We're a joyful church. Bible says, serve the Lord with with gladness. You ought to be happy about serving God. You, you ought to not look like your dog died every time you walked into the building. We, we serve the Lord with gladness. Why? Because we're joyful. We're happy to be a part of what God's doing in this church. We're joyful, aren't we? It's a joyful church. And serve the Lord with gladness. We, uh, the secret is this. We believe that every member is a minister. We believe that every member is a minister. We also believe that every task is important. Every task that goes on is important. And every member of this church is a 10 out of 10 in some area of talent, spiritual gifting, personality. We believe that, in, that every member is a 10 in some area. And we become... We are able to serve the Lord with gladness when, when, we, find, when we find our gifts, we, we understand our personality, and we take that and we tailor it and we serve in the best place that God has called us to serve, the place that fits us. How many know there's a, there's a place that fits us in the kingdom of God? We serve in that place, and that's why we're glad, because God is using us in our purpose. And, uh, you know, Joseph, Joseph was, uh, he was a mighty man. He was, he was a, a, a gifted man, a spiritually gifted man. And uh, God used him in, in dreams and interpreting dreams. But, but he, he, Joseph was an administrator by nature. He was an administrator. Joseph would go, uh, went into the prison, became the administrator of the prison, was elevated to Potiphar's house, he became the administrator of Potiphar's house. Everything that he administrated was blessed and it grew and it flourished. And uh, Joseph, his whole life was around administration. And when God called him into Egypt and got out of the prison and stood before Pharaoh, he gave him his dream, but also gave him a plan. And Joseph spent his life administrating. And so Joseph yes, had spiritual giftings, yes, had talents, but he was used in those specific areas. And, and when we are used in our best areas, when, uh, when we are used in the areas God has intended us to be used, that's when we're our happiest. And that's when we're joyful. Can you say amen to that? Amen. So we are a joyful church. Last thing, we are a church of honor. We are a church of of honor. We believe in honor around here. Be kindly affectionate to one another and with brotherly love and honoring in honor, preferring one another. Bible says, give honor to, unto whom honor is due. It says, 
double honor and to those who labor in the word. We believe in honor at this church. We celebrate one another. We value one another. And we are accountable to one another. We believe in honor. Amen. Amen. So they should have, so they should have all of that up there. And they do. Uh, all of those, if you missed one, those, that's your answer key right there. The seven things that makes our church different. And uh, our church has never been just about a building. It's never been just about a Sunday and a Wednesday service. But it's about living a life that God has called you to live and finding your specific purpose in that kingdom of God. We don't want you to be here just to fill a pew. We want you to be here to, to, to be used in the kingdom of God in exactly the way the Lord has purposed to use you. Can you clap your hands and thank the Lord for that? Turn, turn to page 59. Number seven says, we are a church of honor. And I'm going to I'm gonna read this to you tonight. We're not going to sign this tonight. Next week, we're going to have handouts that, that we are going to uh, offer for you to sign if you want to be a part of the dream team. Next week is going to be all about, uh, is going to be all about us uh, getting your information and then plugging, plugging you into a place that you desire to serve. You see where your best fit is. That's all going to happen next week. It's going to be, it's going to be amazing. Many of you are already serving and, uh, and that's great. We want you to continue that. But, um, so that's what next week's going to be about. Um, so, but I want to prepare you for, for this covenant. It's an honor, honor covenant that we expect all those who join the dream team. You can, um, from pouring a glass of water to, to, to singing on the praise team. That's you're a part of the dream team or the volunteer army of this church. Everybody that's a part of the dream team. Uh, will will need to uh, uh, sign this covenant and honor this covenant. And so let's read this in, in preparation for next week. Uh, as an essential part of the Anchor Church leadership family, you have a responsibility to develop and exhibit mature Christian behavior. This should be the basic premise of your desire to participate in a servant leader position here at the Anchor Church. While serving the body of Christ as a servant leader at the Anchor Church, you pledge to present a good appearance at all times. In both attire and behavior, you should strive to demonstrate biblical standards in all situations. As Christians, the way we present ourselves to others is of vital importance to the way others perceive Christ. Our conduct should never be an embarrassment to Christ but should exemplify the best qualities of a mature believer and servant leader. Exemplifying the highest moral commitment, the anchor church's leaders are to maintain a a disciplined life of Bible reading, prayer, and fasting. We seek to walk humbly before God and refrain from such things as profanity, smoking or chewing tobacco, gambling, indulging in alcoholic beverages, dishonest gain, illegal drugs, pornography, sexual immorality, a modest dress, and all behaviors which might cause Christ to grieve and others to stumble. By providing an example in speech and action, we encourage others to grow in Christ and become servant leaders themselves. This is a way of life measured by the heart and commitment of each leader in the Anchor Church family. We should regard it as an essential part of our development, not as an imposition or restriction. And there you would print, sign, and and date. And next week, uh, if you would so choose to sign that, we will do that and we will take those and and, and get you input into the database and it will, uh, it's going to be great. Would you clap your hands and, and, uh, just thank God for, for this tonight. I want us to stand together. It's seven fifty eight. Don't be late. We are, uh, we're under an hour tonight and, uh, 
If you want to come to the music, we are, we're in the last days, aren't we? We can't afford to be a cookie cutter church. God's not called us to be like every church down the road. Bible says that, that he, that he, he wants a holy church. He said, be ye holy for I am holy. That word holy, it means to be separated. So, so, so this church is different. Is it different? Yes. Do, do, do we look different? Yes. Do we, do we talk different? Yes. Do we live different? Absolutely. Not because we're just trying to separate from the world, but we are trying to separate unto God. We're not just trying to be away just to be away, but we've been called to be close to the King of Kings and the Lord of, and the beautiful thing about the church is that when we were so far away, he made a easy path, Pastor Nehemiah, he made an easy process for me to go from being far away from him to near him. We believe in holiness. We believe in, we believe in the doctrine of this church. Amen. In the doctrine of the word. Amen. We, we believe, amen, that, that the church ought to be different from the world. If, 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 if the church was the same as the world, the, 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 why would the scripture say, come out from among them? Be separate, saith the Lord. God didn't call you to stay in the same mess that you were in before you came to the church. He's one, he wants to call you out of that. He wants to call us out of the mess and the struggle. Amen. And put fences and, and guardrails in our life that, that don't prohibit us, but, but they protect us. Amen. They protect us. Holiness doesn't prohibit us. It protects us. It protects us. You, you know, I, let me say one more thing before we end tonight. But you, you know your bedroom would be a lot less relaxing if there was no walls in it. No walls, no roof, just open air. Still your bed, still your favorite pillow, still all of your favorite things in that, in that bedroom that, you, that you'll lay your head down on tonight on an empty stomach. Still, you'll still, you'll, it's, it's still the same stuff there, but no walls. You would enjoy it a lot less because there's no boundary. There's nothing, there's nothing between you and the elements of the world to keep anything that, 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 that wants to come in can come in. When there's no walls, there's no protection. And we have walls in this church, not as a place to inhibit people, but to protect people. Amen. To protect the freedom that we have found in Christ. This whole nation was formed on laws that protect freedom. Amen. We, we believe in protecting the freedom that we have in Christ. And so we believe in the whole word. We believe in the whole book, amen, and we believe that we can have the greatest life, the, perf the exact life that God has called us to live, amen. I'm going to pray for you before we leave. I want you to lift your hands. Lord, we thank you tonight that you have called us to be a part of your church, not the building, but God, your church. The church that's going to hear the trumpet sound and stand before you, Lord. We thank you, O oh God, for the knowledge of the truth. God, we thank you for the knowledge of what it takes to, to be saved, to, to, to endure until the end, to live a holy life and to be righteous before you. We, we thank you for that tonight, O oh Lord. And we pray, O oh God, uh, that there would be, O oh Lord, a stirring, Lord, in us. Uh, o oh God, that you, you've given us, O oh Lord, so many things. Let there be a burden, God, uh, that comes over us uh, to, to, to show others, Lord, what the life that you have called us and allowed us to live in the name of Jesus we pray and everybody said amen amen they're going to continue to play uh, for just a moment you're welcome to, to pray if you need prayer you're welcome to come to this altar